Hi, it's Darren and welcome to our boardroom. Uh, we're in a new boardroom actually and I'm going to talk about that a little bit in today's update. My goal is to give you an update on all the things we've been working on this year and particularly this summer. We've been very busy and then use this as a communication tool to share with you over time some of the things that we're doing, some ideas we have, some ways we're looking at things and, and decisions that we've made for you and decisions that we've chosen not to make for you. So just as a way to use YouTube and video as a way to for us to stay in touch a bit better. So the first thing is uh, we're in a new boardroom. So Raymond James was kind enough to build us a brand new space. Uh, it's actually just across the hall from the suite where we were and it's bigger, it's brighter, we've got a new boardroom, we've got some really cool technology that no one wants me to learn how to use um, and we have space to grow the team and we are going to grow the team so we'll have more on that shortly. We have someone that crossed the fingers is going to be joining us in the next few weeks. I don't want to jinx it because it did get down to the wire and hopefully everything's going to work out well but we're excited to add someone else on the team uh, to help us manage the, the portfolios and manage the growth of the business that we've had which has been wonderful. Um, Andrea is back which is wonderful so she's back from her maternity leave. She comes kind of quietly came back uh, in August part-time and she'll be full-time coming up in the next few weeks as everyone goes back to school and we get back into the rhythm and I think actually on the team uh, Vicky's the happiest about that because she was carrying all of the weight for the planning for the last year so with Andrew coming back and us getting back to full strength um, we are going to be able to do even more and I know Andrew came back to work with a whole bunch of ideas for for ways we can improve and, and, and change our some of our processes so very excited to implement those things as we go forward. Um, what else have we got? We have a new brand that we're going to be launching, which we're going to talk about that in another video. Uh, our cross-border capability, that unique specialty we have, has continued to grow. So I thought, why don't we create a brand that kind of isolates and identifies that uniqueness a bit better? So we're going to talk about that in a video. Um, we've been very actively working on creating a new pooled fund. We're the first advisors in Canada to be able to have our own pooled fund, which is really, really innovative, and it will allow us to tie the planning and the portfolios a little bit better together. It also allows us to increase the diversification and sophistication of our portfolios because uh, historically one of the challenges is that the sophistication of a portfolio is kind of tied to the amount of money in the account. I can now decouple those and I can put things in that maybe we would need a hundred million dollars to do. I can actually bring that capability to everybody. So that's very exciting. So I'm going to do a video just on that because we're going to have that coming out this fall and that'll help explain some of the changes that you're going to see and why they're so powerful and why they're so innovative and they're going to be really helpful for us. What else is happening? It's a bit of a, a soap opera around here because Nick's getting married. So his wedding's coming up next year, which is wonderful. And guess who else is getting married? Pedro. Can you believe it? He's getting married. So that's wonderful news. So everybody around here is happy and going to be um, having a wonderful 2020 and, and uh, we're going to close out 2019 really well. Um, I also wanted to zero in in this video a little bit today on we've had four phone calls and emails from people on a particular topic which tells me oh my gosh everybody's concerned because when we get four that's a, that's a rush for us. So. Um, and it's about the press in the last few weeks. So we've had some volatility come back into the market. I was very aware that that was going to happen. Actually, in some of our models, I raised cash as we went into the summertime because the market has done really, really well since uh, the beginning of the year. 2019 started off uh, from a low point because 2018 we had what was nicknamed the Christmas Eve massacre because markets dropped a lot just before Christmas. Uh, we did what turned out to be the right thing, which was nothing because we have really good quality investments that pay us all the time. So the bounciness of the market happens and we saw that sharply uh, at the last couple months of the year and then the markets rallied back up. So if you listen to those people on television, you made a big mistake. Don't watch the news unless I'm on it, okay? Uh, so the market went way right back up. We got to summer. I thought, let's take some chips off the table because we probably will get some volati volatility coming back in. We have a lot of things going on. We have the trade war with China. We now have the protests in Hong Kong. The Amazon's on fire. We got the G7 summit. Um, no one's taken away Trump's Twitter account yet. We have an election coming in Canada, so the level of stupidity is going to keep going up because it always gets ridiculous when there's an election campaign. Uh, the Americans are in the middle of their democratic candidate debate. There's lots of stuff that's going to create volatility, I think. And I've been right. It just took a little bit longer than I thought to get here. So um, summer was pretty quiet up until the last week or so. Uh, and now what's interesting is the press has decided to find out, hey, there's this thing called an inverted yield curve. So let's talk all about that because that seems to be the problem du jour. Uh, and now, but most of them went to journalism school. They didn't go to business school. So the fact that we have this thing called an inverted yield curve um, and it's a predicator or a predictor of recession, well, yeah, let's just, I'll unpack that a little bit. And the first thing is there is a recession coming. There's always a recession coming. Winter is coming. Like these things, there, no one has ever repealed the business cycle. So yes, at some point one day there will be a recession. 
Trying to figure out when is frankly a total waste of time because the technical definition of a recession is two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth. So by the time they tell you there's a recession, it's done. So I'm not really, I don't spend a lot of mental calories on uh, worrying about if and when there's a recession. Um, the other thing is many businesses do well and keep paying dividends and everything else during that period, so we tend to ignore it. What's actually more interesting to me about the fact that we have this inverted yield curve, and it's not so much that it's a bad thing in terms of predicting a recession, it's really the fact that interest rates globally have fallen to such an incredibly low level. In many places around the world, interest rates are negative. We have some of our clients in Europe where we're holding European deposits for them. They actually have to pay to leave the money sitting in cash. Isn't that amazing? There's places like in Denmark, for example, where you can now get a mortgage and you're gonna pay back less than you borrowed. That's wild. So this is what the world is looking like today. So to me, the bigger lesson isn't, is there a recession, a recession coming? Because I'm not gonna worry about that. What's vastly more interesting to me, and the press hasn't figured this part out yet, is that when interest rates have gotten to such an incredibly low level, the value of the stream of dividends that we receive from wonderful companies like McDonald's or the banks in Canada, when we receive these wonderful stream of dividends that come from their business operations, those, I, in my view, and the math says, these become nothing but more valuable going forward. So we'll continue our focus, which is where it's always been, on buying wonderful businesses from around the world that pay an ever-increasing stream of income to us. And so we're not going to change from that. I'm not going to let Trump and his tweets and the New York Times and the Washington Post and the CBC, all that stuff is, it's actually becoming clickbait. There isn't a lot of journalism anymore, I don't think. Uh, and as we go into some of these hot things like election campaigns, it gets a bit more ridiculous. So please try and turn that noise off and we'll stay focused, I'll stay focused on our discipline and our processes. And I know over time that is actually what works. So we'll stay focused on works Oh, not necessarily every day, but what works best over all of the days, we'll keep focusing on that. And then we'll try and turn off the other stuff. Um, so I'm going to close it off there. Thank you for watching. And I'm going to create some more videos as we go forward for us to stay in touch a bit better. And I've, always, if you have any questions or anything we can do for you, please give us a call directly. Thank you very much. Have a great day.